adds some volume to it and texture, and it just changes it from being a simple watercolor format or a, a painting, but it's more painterly and abstract. Well, hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'm Judy Heiser, and I am going to be one of the new mentors. I am mentoring with uh, the abstract art making class for aspiring artists. And um, I also teach at the Art League in Alexander, Virginia, and also at Great Falls, and now part of this master's program. So I'm looking forward to it, to being here with you all. I am an abstract painter. I've been painting for 30 plus, 40, 50 years for a long time. My, my um, growing up hey. pretty much my whole life. And um, I started out like a lot of people doing realism, landscapes, uh, still life figures. And I thought I would journey on to abstract thinking, oh, this is gonna be easy. And um, it was not easy at all for me, but I took on the challenge and after several years of really struggling and taking classes from different instructors, I have put together my own kind of, I call it toolkit, um, methods and techniques to help folks make successful abstract paintings. Because sometimes it can just turn into one big mess, but with these tools and techniques, I feel like you can find a lot of successes in how to make an abstract painting. So I'm gonna do a little demo today but my big theme in painting abstracts is it's not so much as what you paint, but how you paint. And when I teach my classes, I tend to be very expressive. I'm an action painter, and it's all about feeling, believing, being inspired, using what is around you. I paint from nature often. I paint from my photographs, from travels, from my real life inspirations. I will juxtapose things and I might start in one direction and transition into another. And um, it's just a lot of fun. I love it. So one thing I did for a while too, is I was um, a board member with an organization called Artspire through Virginia. And I taught at the hospital. It was like a recreational art therapy. Even though I'm not a real art therapist, I am an artist. And it was just so much fun to go and teach patients who hadn't necessarily painted. They're in wheelchairs. They might have had, you know, surgery or stroke or something. And they're just not really able to do much. But through painting, it kind of helps push us into a thinking muscle memory mode. And I was just teaching basic still life shapes and kind of impressionism. And these things would start to happen for folks and things were clicking. And I didn't know what I was doing, but we were painting and enjoying it. And at the end of the session, everyone had a really fantastic painting and they enjoyed it. And the doctors love the program and the administrators love the program and they adopted the, the program. So through that, for me, from that journey, it was proof that art is a medium that really touches our souls and our lives. And I love teaching and I love giving back. And I think anybody who is interested in just trying it, I say, do it, go for it. So the other thing I do with my class too, it's like be brave, be bold, be innovative. We're here as abstract artists and we're going to do something new and different that hasn't necessarily been taught through the masters and the way there are rules and techniques to do things. We are here to make our own rules and try new things. So um, one of the methods I'm going to do today is um, I started this landscape. It's just basically a view out of my studio. There's, um, I might just set this down here. Okay. Um, if that's better to mm -hmm. see. Blow that up. Enjoying the video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when new Masteries videos are added. This is, um, it's the marsh right outside my window. So there's the horizon line. I started this canvas with gesso, carandash. If you don't know what carandash is, it's a, a fresh water soluble uh, crayon. 
that um, melts with the water and mm -hmm. um, just inks. So like a Liquitex ink or what have you. And it was just gesso and I just did um, monochrome, two, two different colors here. And I'm going to glaze it just to add up different layers and mediums to push the mediums around and make it a little more interesting. So at that, I'm um, taking my little crayon and just putting a little, some lines loosely. I'm not trying to draw anything direct, but just add some marks. and interest and just simply with the brush and water, if you can see some of this, they just blend and blade in and a little bit of green. Just add some volume to it and texture and it just changes it from being a simple watercolor format or a, a painting, but it's more painterly and abstract. So from there, I'm gonna add my, um, this is just a medium, a varnish medium. It's a, actually gloss, medium and varnish. And um, sometimes I put it on my palette, but I put my painting on my palette. So I'm going to be brave and bold and I'm just putting this directly onto my painting and I am spreading it around. Pushing the medium. And with that, I'm going to drop a little bit of this golden high flow. They're very high in pigments and just drop it into my painting and push it with my knife and scratch into it. I paint with two hands. And this is the process where I'm I'm just playful and pushing it around. I'm enjoying what's happening. So I started with a realistic landscape and now I'm adding color and blending and just changing up how I'm putting the paint in. I'm using different tools. And I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Okay, it's a little green. into the canvas. Now I have a little bit of color in there. And some gloss and texture. This is a process I like to do more towards the end of my painting too, once I've built up shapes and layers, texture, I'll go in with this gloss and just really brighten up what's happening in the painting. And it just adds a whole nother level of detail, texture, a finished look to it. So it might be a little drippy, but I'll put it back up on my easel and just in that method, 
just gives it a whole different feeling of landscape, yet the medium is a little needier with the texture and the color and the vibrancy from once we started. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my tools that I use in my, my toolbox when I'm doing abstracts. Um, of course, there's always, you know, values, uh, color, lines, shapes. Those are the, the major points, composition, but it's how you paint, um, not what you paint. So that's my, that's my go-to. And uh, we're starting the classes um, in a couple of weeks, January 23rd. Um, and Eastern time from four to six p.m. Yeah. And Anybody have any questions? So, would you add more, um, more layers to that painting after this, or? Um... Uh, yes, I would. So this is going to take a little bit to dry. As I look at it, it's pretty sticky and gooey. Um, right now, I'm like kind of assessing what I would do get more paint out and push push and pull into it scratch i'll pull out graphite um, maybe put some lines into it and really let it come to life on its own without really trying to mimic the exact landscape as i would if i was painting plain air or um, just an oil painting mm -hmm. um, I tend to paint really large abstracts too. And so they just have a, a life of their own when they're painted more from, from my heart and my soul, what I see. Um, I watch the sunrise and the nature and the birds and, and such fly around. So this to me has a lot of life and poetry in it. And that's kind of when I'm teaching, I want people to feel more expressive in their work without being afraid to make marks that might not make sense. The trees are not necessarily purple or violet, but that has a nice rich color to me. So it's a little sticky and tacky right now, but maybe I'd grab my titanium. About how many layers does your average painting have? Oh gosh, average painting, I don't know. My paintings, I tend to, paint and paint and paint, they could have anywhere from three to 23 to 40 layers on wow. them. Wow. And when I say layers, you know, when I'm using inks, graphite, paint, mediums, and then I'll go back in and add more or change or level, level up something else too. So does it take a long time to finish a painting then? Um, Sometimes it could take me a couple of years to finish a painting. Sometimes <laughs> I can finish a painting in a couple of hours. It really, it, it's just, you know, if I have, like, this is a small painting, I could spend maybe another 20 minutes and be satisfied with it. I'm not really sure yet, but, you know, I'll know when I know. But right now, you know, I'm adding some more paint. And then when you do something like that, you're like, oh, and then I could add more over here and then I could add more over there. But mm -hmm. right now I'm like, this seems like it would get close to being almost finished. But I don't really know yet. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't really make that decision until it just feels like I need to be done for a while. I might take a break for two hours a day, three weeks and come back to it and make a few more decisions. You know, unless I'm on a real timeline for a commission or a show, um, I like to really have a relationship with my painting and make it um, so that it feels like it's really speaking to me. That must be a really difficult thing to teach. Um, um, you know what? It depends on the person. It's not 
everyone's so different. And Lori, you can vouch for me because some, some people, you know, want to, they get in and you get connected to it and you don't want to stop. You're like, oh, I've got this. I've got this. I keep going. And then I've had to go in and stop my students. I'm like, it's done. It's done. You can stop now. And then mm -hmm. there's other times where it's like, let's turn it upside down and see what happens. You know, and then you're like, oh, it might need some more value over here or some marks over on this side. Um, mm -hmm. And then it just kind of has this way of really sucking you into the painting. And that's kind of what we want too. When you're looking at a piece of artwork, you don't want to just go, oh, that looks like an apple and a flower. Got it. Moving on to the next. It's like, no, I want to look and I want to just be sucked in. I'm like, oh, look at those marks over there. And is that, is that a, could that be a bird? Or is it, you know, look at these colors. There's just so many different things happening. And I just want to enjoy it. When I was teaching theater, directing, dancing, all of those things, I was working with children. And after months of rehearsal, learning their lines and choreography and staging, when it was time to perform, I said, at this point, you already know what you know. Don't worry about it. Go out there and have fun. If you're having fun, your audience is going to have a good time as well. And nobody knows the lines but you. So if you mess up, don't worry about it. And I feel like that with my painting sometimes because if I mess up, but I enjoy it, it's going to feel like something that's fun and interesting. So it's a little different. That whole focus of abstract art from realism, from figurative still life or real landscape, because it's something that speaks to me, speaks to my heart. So I, I have a question. I'm actually, I have been lucky enough to be one of Judy's um, students in real life just for one term so far, and it's been wonderful. And one of the things that's been really helpful to me, I think when you talk about how difficult it is to teach it, what, what seems like for me, the best balance is you learn some of those basic concepts about what makes a good image, whether it's abstract or something else. And then it's a it's an interaction, right? Between you and the medium and you and your teacher as you kind of go along to kind of understand what's happening and talk about it and play and stuff like that. And Judy's been really great at that, um, helping to give different a different sense of how you're looking at things and see what's interesting that that's already happening and stuff like that. It's been really good. Um, one question that I have is, um, one thing I struggle with is just that very beginning moment. Like you're sitting there and you've got a whole pile of different color paints and something in front of you to paint on. What do you do, right? How do you begin fearlessly, but also constructively, you know? Yeah, that's a really good question, Karen. Thank you. I think that getting started can really be the hardest part, but that is my most favorite part because it's so freeing. And I spent a lot of time playing and getting to know the canvas using gesso and a lot of mark making, knowing that when I put some of these marks in here or many or all, they're gonna go away. But at the in the beginning stages, kind of figuring out and feeling it out. And today I started with this landscape with these horizontal lines, but a lot of times my clouds and my skies get pushed into more geometrical shapes and then reflecting them down because it's what I really see, but I find these shapes and then you know it starts to transform. So when I start a painting, I give myself a lot of freedom to just play and build up layers and watch how it transition. It never ends up as I, one, have in my head, or two, you know, from once I started, oh, I'm going to do this cruciform composition. I'm going to have my values over here, and I'm using this palette. It just, I just let it go. And I've tried, you know, I've found over the years of trying different things, one, I limit my palette, and not till the very end will I add some extra little colors. But by using a limited palette, it keeps me um, working in harmony 
and then continue to find my values and then the structure in like right now I'm looking at this painting and I'm looking at the texture from the um, this brush to the scratches to the crayon mark in here that I can see in detail and this level of the glazing coming through and then the scratches from the gesso coming in. There's a lot of different things happening. And that was just from the beginning stage to the end stage, all this different medium coming in here. It wasn't part of my initial plan. So mm -hmm. when I talk about, you know, mind mapping, what is mind mapping? I kind of take you through that ex exploration of different ideas. Um, also looking at other inspirations, things that you might have collected, going through sketchbooks. And I compile a lot of things that are my inspiration just for that day, for that moment, and see what happens, what evolves. And when you have time to paint, I don't want to um, not be able to use that because I don't have an inspiration. So I have So it sounds like there's like a practice there. There's a a daily, not maybe not a daily practice, but of like seeing and collecting. Do you know what I mean? It sounds like, like there's a day, there's something that's happening for you, even when you're not painting. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, as artists, as creatives, I think we're always collecting information, always collecting ideas. When I look at a tree, I look at the negative spaces within the branches and look at these shapes. When I see people walking, look what they're wearing or how they're walking or the movement of the expression. I mean, the more you paint, the more you look at art, the more you see, the more you realize there's, there is to see. And it's just, there's really no end. There's no limit to it. And as an abstract painter, we have no limit. So, you know, some of my inspirations, like Franz Klein, I love the movement. He has great big, bold lines. And then later I learned that you know, he was painting his wife who was rocking in a in a chair and he was just capturing some of that movement and her moving. And an artist friend of his told him he should paint that bigger and blow it up. And now when you look at this, some of his paintings, like I see the rocking chair. <laughs> but, you know, unless you know what, what they're doing, it's just this expression and coming from your hand, your movement, how you're feeling that day and transferring based on the colors that you choose, your color palettes and how you mix your colors is what is going to transform from that mood. And so sometimes when we're painting from a different emotion and you go back to it later, days later, a month later, a year later, you're gonna feel completely different from when you started. So, you know, if you're working on that plan or that process, do you want to stick with that? Do you go back to your journal and your sketchbook and follow through with that? Or you just let it go from where it is today. Mm -hmm. And I find for me that painting in the moment is more um, successful in being true to what is happening for me right now. So, mm -hmm. It comes from experience too. <laughs> Judy, I have a question. Um, so I'm not familiar with the platform and um, a little bit just jumping in, maybe it's more of an administrative question, but how do you see like the, the sessions? Because what I read a little bit about Mastery is, is that you can, and I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing it correctly. Um, like if, you know, after four sessions, one of us wants to go with another mentor. So I'm assuming these are kind of standalone sessions where you're doing a demo and are we painting? Are there a question, answer? And then um, I know we like filled out profiles about our goals and growing as artists. Um, so will some of those sessions include things like, you know, the business of art or, um, some of those other burning questions some of us might have in our journey. Yeah, the way I understand it, Lori, is that um, it's really geared towards your specific needs. So whereas, you know, in a classroom environment, I might have 18, 20 people, I teach to that one lesson, but the master's group is pretty small, eight people max. Um, and so we work on everybody's needs where you're at 
and it's more of a discussion and sharing and then I'll do a demo and then give homework and throughout that next month you spend time continuing your work and uh, doing the homework and then there are meetup sessions with the navigator and y'all can meet in groups and it sounds like some of the groups stay together and move as a group to a, a different mentor based on needs. Um, mm -hmm. And there are so many different mentors to choose from as well. Jelaine, do you have something to add to that? You you basically covered it, but that's through like the group, a lot of a lot of the groups they get to know each other really well and they move as a group to another mentor. But sometimes people leave earlier and and you can leave the group basically any time and and find another group to join if or or not join whatever you want you know like yeah but the sessions are um it's kind of a, a standard thing like first we do celebrations and challenges we discuss what happened the last month and then there is a, if like the first session will be different but uh, it'll be the introductions but then after uh, the second session we'll discuss homework or julie will discuss our homework and then um, there'll probably be a demo or a presentation by Julie and she'll give us homework for the next session. And then um, in mid-month, which is usually after two weeks, um, we'll meet with, with me because I'm the navigator and uh, and we can discuss anything, like any questions you have or the homework or whatever too. Um, the other thing is too, like if you're not familiar with the format and if you need um, help, with um, going over the the layout of the the page, the master's profile, I can set up a session with you and and privately and go over that if you like to. So, like to make you familiar with the whole sheet, the web page. So yeah. Yeah, and Jillian, can you also talk about some of the other events that happen throughout? I yeah. Know there are courses, and they have like um, other not really necessarily workshops, but they'll do paint alongs. There'll be lectures from other mentors that- There are quite a number of, of events, like every week there is something, uh, like usually there are presentations, like um, it could be any subject. Like I, I don't remember right offhand now what the most recent ones are, but um, it could be any subject that they have a presentation on for about an hour, maybe two on different on different subjects like it could be how to finish a painting for example there are also um, discussions between artists two artists and get together and they discuss certain subjects it could be like color or or um i don't know <laughs> how to frame things any any subject really anything you can think of um and then there is also uh paint alongs uh, usually those are on a friday that julie de boer or she might invite another artist and then you can paint along with her there are also art uh, online art shows there's about three or four a year i've participated in some of them and they're totally online and they have different teams um i don't know what the, when the next one will be like i've they haven't announced it yet and um yeah, there is a lot of things going on with masters. A lot of things, yeah. And those yeah. events, if you if you have like if you're part of Julie's um, workshop, then a lot of these events they're free. And if you're not part of, um, I'm saying workshop, uh, her group. If you're not part of the group, then you can sign up for these events separately as well. So, and then there are courses too, like uh, the most recent course I took was with uh, Mitchell Albala and it, it was four weeks on composition and design, which was really good. And and like, that's literally a four week course. We meet every week and for two hours and, uh, and he teaches us online. So there are a couple of currently going on as well. So, and one is coming up with Shannon May and she's talking about the um, the business aspect I think it starts this week. It starts either it has started or it starts soon. And she's really good about the marketing and and the business aspect of art. So because I, she also has a master's group and I'm a member of the group and I have been with her for a whole year. Our group has been with her for a whole year. So and she took us systematically on planning like art shows and on the marketing and Instagram and everything prints 
everything yeah and the group is open for um a couple more spots so if you want if you're interested in that you might want to look into that her name is shannon i may i'll look i'll write it in the chat i also find in uh, the groups that i'm in that when the group members use the chat it's kind of like a closed facebook group where you can chat with each other all the time it's yeah. fun to keep up with what each other are doing we post the work that we're doing and it's really nice i don't want to put any pressure on you judy but it's really nice when the mentor chimes in and comments on the work that we are posting <laughs> totally. but you don't have to do that as the mentor you only have yeah. to show up once a month but it's kind of nice when they do that <laughs> of course yeah that's the fun stuff too seeing the work mm -hmm. well and as you know Lori and and karen like the shows that you guys are doing now there's so much more to art than just painting you know framing doing your artist statement getting into exhibits and and then finances and Mm -hmm. social media and it just kind of goes on and on and there are there are some wins and and how to's lessons learned and then what works and what doesn't work and it's nice to have a community to work with on that and mm -hmm. this is something that's new to me I wish I had access to this 20 years ago when I was learning the hard way um hardly had a cell phone <laughs> or GPS and um so I, I love this program and all of the information that is already out there that Julie and Mike have been putting it together. So I'm anxious to learn more about it myself. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for all the information. I didn't mean to um, insinuate that I'm trying to jump ship already to another mentor or anything because Judy has been fabulous and I've had the pleasure of being in her classroom for I, I don't know how many sessions now. Um, and I've learned so, so much and I continue to, I look forward to continuing to learn from her. She's awesome. I, I just gave the, the example of Shannon May's group because I've been with her for a year now, exactly a year. And there are groups that have been together for more, like for two years too. So, you know, yeah. And some with the same mentor as well. So it doesn't mean you have to change, like you can stay with the same mentor for for more than six months too yeah well and thank you Lori. i appreciate that and i also think it's amazing that we can have the opportunity to learn from other people and i encourage us to reach out and learn from others and i'm going to be joining other mentors as well just having met some through the chats and like oh i want to learn more about what you're doing so mm -hmm. it's nice yeah. to have these resources available to us mm -hmm. right so you can be in more than one group <laughs> You can be in more than one group, yes. Mm -hmm. I am in about four, I think, right now. So yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Judy, I have a question. When you when you, you give you um I'm new to I'm new to painting. I've been painting a couple of years, but you know, I'm not good at it. Is this I mean, is this a good place for me? I'm taking a drawing class right now because I know that's pretty fundamental. But um you know, I like abstract art. I like colors. I like shapes. I like putting stuff together, you know, like a jigsaw puzzle with paint. And it's just fun to slop paint on a, not slop, but place it on a, a you know, canvas. But um, I guess I'm in a little confused state because I don't know if I should get down to base because I, I have no formal art training whatsoever. I was in a, you know, doing something else. <laughs> yeah. You are my favorite kind of student. <laughs> oh, really? Because I don't know anything? <laughs> because, because I love to start from the beginning and just throw it all out there and just let you get your hands messy without mm -hmm. all of these other rules and, mm -hmm. and just take off. And okay. I have a lot of new students who have taken off. And mm -hmm. I think Lori and Karen can vouch for me they're already doing shows and in galleries and it's just uh, so fun to watch it. And, you know, if, if it's going in the wrong direction, we can stand back and look at it and I can help you figure out why that's happening. And I do this little critique where I give everybody, you know, it's a self critique and you go down the list, you know, like, why am I doing this? And you ask yourself all these questions and then you kind of find answers to it. But the basic tools, you know, we go through that and how to do homework and thumbnail sketches and what speaks to you. And um, some of my sessions are like nine weeks and we go through a series. And by the end of that, you're all painting masterpieces. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, sound, that, sound, that sounds like, you know, I've, I think I need a little structure because like I said, I have no 
I know what I like when I look at it, but you know, I don't know what other artists think about it. So, you know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, structure can be great. I don't like to be put into a box, but mm -hmm. I set a lot of boxes up for everybody. And then I let you crawl out of those boxes. Yeah. Um, but you know, some of these homework assignments or the, you know, the exercises that you do, you get these aha moments where like, oh, I get that. Now I get it. And then you can apply the different techniques at different times whenever you want to your work. Okay. That sounds good. <laughs> it's fun. It's really fun. Well, mm -hmm. thank you everybody for joining. That was a surprise to see so many faces. Um, mm -hmm. I hope you joined my mentor class. And even after the first one, if you want to explore and step into another one, I know there's a lot of um, transitional help along the way. If you're looking for something else, if you want something more in finance or even, I just love the international aspect of it and talking and seeing what people are doing around the world, which is a little bit different than what we're doing here in Alexandria, Virginia. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Rudy. Thank, thank you, Jocelyn. My pleasure.